special, we would have to raise money and then have to like switch stuff over to do something different. Well, look, your assets, just can't do. your assets have value, right? The land has value, the ranch, the equipment, right? This all has value. You, you know, you, like it's not like you couldn't recoup some losses by selling that, right? Why? But like our family has worked hard to gain that land and be able to be successful yeah. in this industry. But, okay. But, but it's but it's a it's a death cap, like yeah. So, well, it's I like we raise these cattle like they're free for most of their life until like until yeah if, like maybe yeah so yeah yeah so yeah, until, so so except, if, yeah but like that's not like we kill them when they're kids we like if their mom abandons wait, them wait I'm, I'm sorry how them. how old yeah how old are these cattle when they're sent to slaughter well they they've almost reached their like maximum lifespan I would say like okay, how can, how old do you think that is well I'd have to look but. Yeah. Wait, so you don't know how old they are when they're sent to slaughter? Is that what you're and saying? It's more of like my, like my, but, but grand, you just like said, my grandpa. You just said that you just said they live out full lives. They reach the maximum lifespan, and then they're sent to slaughter, right? You just made that claim, but now you're telling me you don't know how old they are when they're sent to slaughter. Can you take a guess? I would say around like thir- twelve to thirteen years. Okay. okay. All right. So can Do you I? Realize that... Yeah. Go, go on. Go All on. right. Cool. So I, I don't know what's happening on your farm or whatever, but uh, the natural lifespan of a cow is about 25 years old, but most of them are killed when they're only 18 months old, about a year and a half old. The natural lifespan of a pig is about 12 years, just like a dog, 12 years old, but pigs are killed when they're only six months old, right? The reason for this, uh, unless we're talking about some weird, rare case scenario where you're saying this animal lived to be 12 years old, but their natural lifespan of a cow is 25 that's very rare. Like animals are killed when they're children because that's when it's profitable for the farmer to kill them. It's not f- profitable for the farmer to keep feeding this animal day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade when the animal reaches slaughter weight when they're a child at six months or 18 months respectively, right? So th- it's just not economically feasible to pour a bunch of food costs into this animal so that they can have a nice long life, right? So, uh, go ahead. Okay. So I could see what you mean. I guess like our, my family, we just, we slaughter them at such an old age because it's for like, we eat the meat personally and like, we're mostly like, I guess a corn or soybean or like more of a cr- like crop based farm. Okay. Well, even still, like what you said was that you're killing the cows. You don't even know how old the cows are, but you're guessing that maybe they're about 12 or 13 years old. But that's still, their natural lifespan is 25 years. So that's still cutting short their life by like 10 years, 15 years. So that's still, you know, like cruel, right? Go find out how, how old these animals are when they sent to slaughter on, on your family's farm, right? The sense I'm getting from you is that it's wrong to kill animals when they're children because you're like well we don't kill them when they're children at our farm we kill them when they're 12 years old so does that mean that you are against killing young animals because that's where most animals come from factory farms and slaughterhouses where animals are killed at a very early age so are you against that well i, I mean there's i'm not okay i can't it's wrong to kill baby like baby animals but like i can't go against that because that's just what the world wants and like well some people just because the world wants something doesn't make it right, right? I mean, look, the world wants a lot of things, right? It's just ha- you just happen to have selected this industry that's like, <laughs> yes, just, just murdering baby animals. Yeah, so so like, yeah, a bunch of baby animals are killed. Like in the egg industry, for example, they kill all the baby males uh, on the first day of life because the baby birds don't grow big enough to become a meat bird. That's that kind of bird doesn't grow big enough to become a meat bird and they don't lay eggs because they're males. So all the baby boys are uh, put onto a conveyor belt and thrown into a grinder where they're just chopped up alive, macerated. I don't know if you're aware of that, if you've seen footage of that, but that's standard industry practice for egg industry. So that's baby animals being killed. Do you support that? Because a second ago you said that well, obviously, obviously, I, I obviously want to support that because they're not they're not like harvesting it and like using the product. They are just killing them because they they find no use in them. Well, what if they turned them into dog food or something? Would that make it okay? Well, then they would be 
using them at least. It's still not okay, but then at least okay. they would be using it for okay, something. Yeah, so just killing them okay, because so, they're useless. But either way, you said it's un, it's it's unethical to kill baby animals, right? Depending on the subject, yes. Okay. I would say so. Okay. So uh, so what at what age does it become ethical to kill animals when we don't need to do this? Well, I would say around like when they've almost reached their maximum lifespan, but I, like you said, their lifespan's 25 years old, or around 25 years old, but then my family kills them around 12 to 13, but we kill them because we, like, are the freezer, like, we just need the meat because, like, big family, we don't want to spend a lot of money on meat from, like, big producers, well, so we just... But, no, hold on, hold on, that's a false dichotomy, though, because you uh, could I just... Think, well, hold, on. So it's, hold, it's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Remember this 12 to 13... It's just a guess, right? Yeah, it's just a guess, right. but also, like, you don't you don't have to eat any meat, right? You could just buy or grow plants. But people, a lot of reasons people don't go vegan is because it, it's more expensive. It's unless not. you are, like, really no... It, it's unless not. Unless you really know no vegan, it's, it's, it's expensive. No, it's not. It's not. Can. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the uh, price in just a second, but I still need an answer of, like, okay, how old is it? is an animal when it's okay to kill them for an unnecessary product. You're saying like once they've reached old age because the natural entailment of that is that you're against animal farming in general, uh, like 99% of animal farming more than that uh, because they're killed when they're children. Yeah, okay. Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I think it's a terrible idea to kill animals when they're just children and not past the age of at least like Okay. It makes it so much better in the case of like non baby animals. Okay. To, to just kill them. Yeah. yeah so like a baby baby cows are the cutest thing ever. I would never want to kill one. Okay. So when we're making progress, but what this means is that place. what this means is that if you're morally against killing young animals for food that we don't need to eat, then you are by definition against ninety nine percent of the fa animal farms and slaughterhouses in the world. Yeah. And and so the, if you're right. actually against that, you should stop, like, don't buy products from there, don't support those industries, right. and actively speak out against the killing of baby animals that is where most people get their meat, dairy, and eggs. I wouldn't, I, I we don't buy meat because we, we carry okay. meat but, from our own cattle. Okay, but I would, I would recommend I that... I speak out against them because they give jobs to people and they oh. provide for families. Oh, like, Okay, so now it's is it is it now ethical because it's providing jobs for people to kill baby animals? Well, yeah, it's not. Well, it's so difficult to argue because it provides jobs for people, but it's also unethical. It's ethical because it provides jobs, but it's unethical because it kills all the animals. Okay, so I'm going to talk. Can, can we just get you to tell the audience that what you know they're supporting is at least immoral in your view? That. Killing baby cows is immoral, I would say. And, and so, I, would find, so I would find a better all, all the, if, you, if you don't want to go vegan, I would find a better alternative. Like, I would find, like, not, like, industrial-grade, like, industrial farms. I would find, like, small farms, local farms that could but, provide meat that's not killed from baby cows. But right, even... Right, so I'll, go vegan. Even I'll, I'll hop off in one sec, Chase. Chase, uh, I'll just hop off in one sec. So you are saying that whatever, you know, since the majority of an animal products come from these factory farms, you are saying what they are supporting is immoral, correct? Yes, it's immoral to support big industrial facilities that are killing baby cows. Okay. But instead of supporting big industrial facilities, you can help small local farms by buying meat if you don't want to go vegan. Okay, so the thing though is that even small local farms kill animals when they're children, all right? Because again, it's not economically viable, it's not feasible, it's not profitable for any farmer to keep feeding these animals and giving them veterinary care and housing them and all this stuff, giving them water every day. Like, why do this if it's all for profit? Because most of the time, when you you can feed a cow off your own land, you can harvest your own alfalfa, hay, you can feed it to them. And then you can water. You can water most of the time from small farms, is from wells, from underground. They don't, like, pump water from big places. It's pumped out of the ground for free. Okay, so why do you think, though, that, most like... Most food for cows is from... Most food from cows is when they're out grazing in the fields. Okay, but do for, you do you farm, really... small farms. Okay, do you really... Yeah, industrial. do you really think that small local farms 
care enough about those cows that they're sending to slaughter to have their heads cut off that they will keep them alive for decades until they grow to be a nice old age? That's what my family does. We, yeah, that's but what we do. but okay. So so years. why do you so think? They, uh, but I'm you're not. Sorry, hold on, hold on. But you're not. You're wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. You're not. Sorry, you're, not, you're, not you're not. You're not selling. Your farm isn't selling these animal products, right? Yeah. You're just eating them yourself. So you don't have I them. Mean, you don't have. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't have the profit motive, right? But any kind of farm where they're selling these products has a profit motive. Well, yeah, my our family farm doesn't have a profit motive. But if someone came and asked. Hey, can we like buy meat off of you? We would say yes, but then we would we wouldn't kill some baby cow to feed like we wouldn't if we didn't have enough cows we wouldn't kill a baby cow to feed that person. We would just say no, we can't right now. Okay. But if so somebody said, hang on, hey, hey Travis, I just wanted to like earlier you said that it would be better if we just had a world in which like you know everyone still had enough to eat, right? And like people still had their jobs, but we just didn't slaughter any cows, right? You said that would be like but on your values just be a better world right in general yes but that world is probably yeah. not feasible right and if we can show that, that this world is feasible right and that the best way to get there is just by going vegan but what happens if like if someone was didn't want to go vegan but they also but they wanted to buy meat would you rather want them to buy from big industrial farms or would you rather them buy local and get like okay a less young cow and not be okay or would you just say go vegan yeah, we would just say but go vegan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we would just but say go vegan. The animal was locked in a cage its whole life and then stabbed or just stabbed. Like, yeah, probably the latter, right? But, we, but the, the, this is a false dichotomy. Like, the real choice we have is, <clears throat> like, cause an animal to be locked in a cage all its life and stabbed, cause an animal to be stabbed, or just consume plant products and just don't cause any anybody to be stabbed, right? Earlier you were saying that 4-H... Uh, is essentially not child abuse, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go against that again. So uh, Wait, send me more pictures of sad cows. Don't, don't send me more no, pictures no, of sad no, no, cows. no. I already posted. <laughs> hold on, listen. I already posted what I need to post. I want everybody else to see it though. Just, so just, I want hold, hold on. Hey, I'm not showing pictures of crying cows. I'm showing pictures of crying children, little humans who are sad that they're having to sell their animals to a slaughterhouse, like you said, does not happen in 4-H. And so I want everybody in the audience to go to stage one text on the left side of your screen in the menu bar. Stage one text is four channels above where we're currently at. And scroll up. Yes, I've posted these, I posted these pictures about 20 minutes ago, so scroll up a bit, and you'll see five different pictures of five different human children crying over the fact that they have to sell their friends to have their little heads cut off. And I want to understand what you mean when you say that 4-H is not child abuse. Well, I just want, what, what, but the, you're, you're, you see, you're specifically picking pictures from just certain things. You're not, you're not showing bright sides of 4-H. You're not showing kids learning. You're just showing them, you showed five kids crying, but you're not showing 20 kids being happy to see, like, show their cows and earn medals. Yeah, sure, and, because, like, because be this... Proud of their accomplishment of raising this cow to be healthy and look good in front of judges. Yeah, because... You're taking five little kids that are crying from their cows. Right, because this is the final stage, and this is what upsets and breaks the hearts of little children, right? Yeah, it's all fun and games until they have to, like, be separated from their friend, and they know now what they've done. And that their friend is going to be stabbed in the neck. As a child. Like, the animals are children too. Okay? So I want everybody to see the these pictures. Like, what's the justification for doing this to animals? And what's the justification for doing this to human children? Well, first of all, you, you're still just picking out... You're not showing, like, kids learning or being happy. Like, you find... You, you probably looked up 4-H kids sad because their cows going away. Yeah, I could show showing, like, I could show the pictures that you're talking about where anal, or where children are happy as they're getting on, an award for their cow being so big and healthy, right? It's not, but that's but no, that's it's, irrelevant to what we're talking about because all of that is just brainwashing to get to the point where to normalize this violence against animals and try to desensitize children to slaughter. But these children still realize that slaughter is animal cruelty. And it breaks their little hearts. And why don't you care? I, I, I never 
I said I didn't care that kids were sad. I could see why someone would be sad. But you're just like for everything that you guys show up, you're like we have a I have a dairy farm that's like for, like we don't own it, but we know them, and it's a dairy farm that was like forty miles away from us, and all their cows are raised outside, and they brought it in to be milked because it's it's better for them to be milked once like like when they're supposed to be properly milked than them to not be milked at all. Yeah, you know why? Because we selectively bred and genetically modified cows to uh, produce more milk than they naturally would. And so their udders get giant, and they get infected, and they get mastitis. And yeah, they need to be okay. they need their babies to drink their milk. But we take the babies away so that the baby doesn't drink the profitable milk product that we want to sell to the consumers, right? And so the baby is now crying because they don't know where their mother is. They just want to suckle, right? They want to cuddle with their mother. The mother is crying because her baby's been stolen and she's freaking out, right? These are maternal creatures that have a very strong bond with their babies, and we separate them for no good reason, for profit, for money, for greed, selfishness, right? And we don't need to do this. And then the baby is killed, and then the mother is killed, and we, we feed the murdered mother to our children in the school lunch program. It's absurd. But, but like... I, I could see why someone would be very upset with this, but you can, like... Well, the, the, the reason we're upset is because, you know, that there is just this alternative, right? That we can just... It's, have it's, it's not, well. but some people... It's not so simple for some people. Some people, like, well, prob some people can't just switch, like, instantly yeah. like that. Yeah, some people who are, have, like, you know, massively invested in, in the industry, right? And that's all, all they know for, for, like, a lot of, a lot of people, right? Um, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, you have these entire like communities that are built around like you know, these, these kind of rural like farming practices right um i get it like but we, we wouldn't use this to justify it if like if you, if you want to sit here and say yeah i accept that it's immoral it's just like you know we, it's just that all people know and it's hard for people to change like it's not just that but like some people are not they can't access vegan food because i go like if i go to the store and i go look for vegan stuff i'm not gonna find it in the midwest nebraska i'm sorry you can't find hold on hold on you can't find rice and pasta fruits vegetables seeds nuts beans bread well yeah, yeah well, if, I, if, I just, if i just if i eat a diet of just that i wouldn't get the, the nutrition really i need unless i what would what nutrition what uh nutrients would you be missing okay so I would like the main proteins from like beef. Like what? Wait, what are they? Yeah, what are the main proteins from beef? Oh yeah. Okay. So like, I would, iron. Uh, Just wait, 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 wait! Protein. I don't want to talk about iron. I want to talk about protein. You said protein. Let's talk about iron in a minute. Okay, I want to be able to get the nutri like the actual nutritional protein to build muscle mass. Okay, so I want yeah. everybody, everybody, go to stage one. Text again. So I'm posting if you, now. If you pull up like some crazy fruit, I'm, I'm gonna say no. Because, no, just like, chill out. Most chill. Fruit it's we have okay. In our it's bananas. okay. Don't the worry. Is, uh, we've got. We got I'm all. Still doing that, Chase. Yeah, we've I'm got. Just, uh, we've sorry. got. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, we've got all the scientists backing us up. So don't worry. We're gonna have real, actual, empirical evidence. So. Uh, here's some vegan bodybuilders and the statement from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. I'll read this out for everybody. The Academy of Nutrition. Oh my God! You sent, you sent this yesterday just because you pointed out ten people that are jacked out of their mind and probably have professional people telling them what to eat and have access to more like foods than like people that regular people that live in the Midwest or live anywhere in the world. That's so the thing. Okay. With yeah. Nature, hold, hold on. Hold the on. The thing with protein is that. Like, it's actually really hard to be deficient in protein, right? We can get it from peas, we can get it from uh, nuts, we can get it from, like, tofu, beans, lentils, soy milk, chickpeas. Um, there's just, like, there's so many different sources of protein. It's actually, if you're if you're not at a caloric deficit, if you're actually getting enough calories, then it's just going to be really, really hard to be um, protein deficient. Like, yeah. You would actually have to go out of your way to construct, like, a mix that okay. contains, like, mixed vegetables and also be um, yeah. calorically sufficient but protein so, deficient. So here's the thing. I Actually, posted, you, could uh, just, you, could eat, you could eat only bread and not be protein deficient. Like every... Okay, like every look. Food that I'm, listen, I'm, listen, listen. Every listen. food that I'm aware of is, has a complete amino acid profile 
except for gelatin. So okay. you could eat only bread and not be protein. Okay, listen. We have scientists backing us up. If you want to support your empiric claims of nutrition, you need to back it up with some sources because I've got the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics right here and that's not where I end. I have plenty of other sources as well. All right, I posted a picture of vegan bodybuilders to make a point, but that's not where it ends because I have scientists backing this up. So the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is the world's largest organization of food and nutrition experts with 100,000 registered dietitians. And their position is that an appropriately planned vegan diet is healthy, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits for, for the prevention and treatment of certain diseases such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, certain types of cancer, and obesity. These nutrition experts confirm that a vegan diet is appropriate for all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, older adulthood, and for athletes. So if you wait, have another wait, source, let's see it. Wait, but can I point out something that, that you just said? Yes. You said appropriately, wait, can you read that again? It start uh, with appropriately. Appropriately planned diet, vegan appropriate diet. Plans. Yes. Appropriately planned um, vegan diet, which is not hard to do. I assume it wouldn't be hard to do, but like people don't want to go to the store or like look it up and try to like figure out a way to become less. But it just seems like this really small inconvenience, right, for a lot of people. Yeah, okay, maybe you need to spend twenty minutes talking to a vegan, or you need to go online and Google like you know like what a balanced vegan diet looks like. Right. right? Um, but compared to like these animals, like the, the experiences, they, they just have to. Just been slaughtered, bred into existence and slaughtered. Like you know, like these thousands of, I mean, you know, just just one person is going to be hundreds and hundreds of, of animals, right? Um, over the course of their life, but but like it, it just in total, like there's billions of these these land animals. We're just breeding into existence. There's more of them on the planet than there are humans. That's like it's just insane. Like and and this is just because we're misinformed about nutrition because people yeah. think they need it in their diets, right? Yeah. Like and, and there's a reason for that, right? It's, it's because of the billions and billions that get poured into like advertising for for the animal agricultural industry to, to to get people to think that they need you know, they need meat because otherwise they'll be protein deficient or they'll have iron deficiency or they need milk for calcium or things like this, right? The things that just like if you even look into them a little bit, it's just obviously not true. Yeah. Like, okay. So so okay, I, I, I just want to say something. Okay, I'm not. I don't have anything against vegans. I think it's. I think being a vegan is. I think. It's, I think being a vegan is good. But like, hey, it's like hate, session. Like, just, just don't hate. Well, I'm not gonna become a vegan because I. I just would you be would you be a more ethical person if you were vegan? Uh, it depends on like. Like, but just the would, if, everybody became, if, like, if everybody became vegan, then people would lose jobs. And would you say the same gosh. thing about like jobs in the tobacco industry? Like, what if what if I just choose to stop smoking? Right? <laughs> like, yeah, am I am I like responsible? For people losing their jobs now? Is that should I just carry on smoking just because but, people lose their jobs? But you're protecting your own personal health by be your own. Okay. Your what if I'm not protecting, protecting my health? Yeah. What if I'm not protecting my own personal health? What if it's somebody else? Right? What if what if I'm buying products that are produced by slaves like you know but should i should i worry about the slave owners going out of business if i stop purchasing well, the, the, the because product, that's, right yeah well you sh that's just wrong getting like s slavery shouldn't be a thing anymore yeah except we have still, animals still yeah you said you it, said earlier that the reason that you the reason that you have like intrinsic value for a human right that you value their intrinsic um that you assign them intrinsic value as opposed to the cow where you, you, that you just sign an instrumental value it's just because they're a human, right? That's what you said. Like you just said it's because they're a human. You realize that... Yeah, yeah but, I mean... <laughs> can we just use that same, like, kind of logic where we just decide, like, who to extend moral consideration to or not on, like, arbitrary lines? Like, can we use that same logic to justify pretty much anything? Like, can we justify, like, racism or sexism? But otherwise, how are you going to criticize somebody who says, well, look, I mean... Like white people, they get moral consideration, right? But but that's only because in virtue of them being white people, like people if people are black, they just don't get moral consideration, right? Basically all you're saying is like they're not part of our group. They weren't born into the same group that I was born in, so they don't matter, right? But nobody gets to choose what body hold on, nobody gets to choose what body they're born into, and there's nothing wrong with being different. So for the same reasons that we reject 
racism and sexism, we reject speciesism, the discrimination based on the species that somebody's born into, because all of those shell arguments, you know, whatever shell somebody is born into, are irrelevant when we're talking about ethics, because what matters is not what somebody looks like, but if they're sentient. So if they are the type of individual who has a brain and a nervous system, they are therefore sentient, all right? They are able to feel pain and pleasure. They have friends and families that they care about. They're able to enjoy a nice sunny day and fresh air and good food and playing in a field, right? They have a desire to continue living. They're able to enjoy their life. They have a subjective, a subjective experience that matters to them. And so all of these other things are irrelevant. And if you want to say, well, animals aren't as smart as us, that's why we can do this to them. Well, then I would just point you to a mentally disabled human who is only as smart as a pig and ask you if it's okay to cut their head off. Okay, well, you, you say that, you're, so you're saying that you value a cow's life the same as a human's. I'm saying that there are many different ways of valuing, of assigning. Yeah, that was a yes or no. Hey, I'm sure. answering your question. If you want a legitimate answer, you got to listen. All right, so there's several criteria for which I assign moral value. One of them is sentience. How sentient are, like, are they sentient? And how sentient are they compared to another individual, okay? And then another thing is lifespan. How long is this individual going to live? And then another thing I would factor in is contribution to the world. Are they going to cause more suffering or more good things to the world or kind of neutral? So, like, if we're comparing an ant to a pig, I'm going to value the pig more because the, the ant is only going to live like 30 days or whatever, whereas the pig is going to live about 12 years. The pig is a more complex individual with a more uh, complex brain and nervous system and has a more uh, complex experience of life, all right? And then also... Uh, hold on. Oh. I can just counter argue with you and say that a human's life is more valuable than a pig's life because we think more and that we show sure. more emotions than a pig. Sure, like, and you, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Short hold short on. Short wait, wait, sizable, hold on, hold on. So, so you don't... To, I did just want to say to Atrex, look, it's not, it's not going to be... Hang on, I'm sorry, because this is, I think this is a really important point. Like, we're not saying that you have to think that a human's life is less valuable than an animal's life, okay? We're just saying that you have to think those animals' lives are more valuable than cheeseburgers, right? Cheeseburgers that are going to be like a five-minute meal maximum, and then you're going to turn them into turds and never think about them again, right? We're saying that the, the sentient experience of this animal is more valuable than the trivial hedonic pleasures that you're going to attain from consuming their flesh, right? Okay. Um, so no, we don't. You know, we're not saying you need to value a human uh, life less than an animal life or an animal life more than a human life. We're just saying you need to value them more than like this five-minute meal, right? Yes. So, yeah, so I'm so I'm really sorry, Chase. It's you, okay. Uh, it's okay. I was going to say the exact same thing, but the idea is also that like I bet you would agree with me, Atrax, that there are some humans who are less valuable on your value system than certain animals. So if we're talking about instead of an ant versus a pig, if we're talking about um, a dog, like do you like dogs? Yeah, but okay. like half the population likes dogs. Okay, right. So let's compare a nice they, friend. They oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Any, they don't have any like. They don't have any. Like, if you kill a dog, they don't have any like value. Well, no, you could like, no, you could eat them. Nope, you could eat them. You, you could, could you, you can, could you could you could you could cook them up. But no one's gonna kill a human because that's just no. But that's just you just you just listen for a second. If we compare a kind dog versus Hitler, or some child abuser who shows no remorse. You're probably going to value the life of the dog more than that human, right? Well, if, okay, so you just said a child abuser. You just compared a dog and a child abuser. A child abuser, like, hurts kids. It hurts other human beings. So, obviously, I would pick the dog. Right. Like Hitler killed millions of Jews, so obviously I'd pick the dog. That's right? what I'm saying. So, just because they're human doesn't necessarily make them more valuable than an animal. But... So, okay. but generally speaking, it's totally fine for you to value humans more than animals, okay? But just, just don't kill them for a snack. That's all we're saying. Like, people have been eating animals like for centuries. Okay. It's so hard to reverse it. That everybody's been doing sure, it's going like, to be hard to reverse it, but we're working on it, right? We've been, uh, humanity has been oppressing women for thousands of years, right? But a hundred years ago, a small group of women said, we ain't going to take this shit no more. And they stood up for themselves and they empowered a lot of other women to stand up for themselves. And then a bunch of men who were kind of on the fence about the issue, who thought women should have the right to vote, started saying, hey, you know what? 
I'm finding the courage now because of these activists motivating me. I'm finding the courage to stand up for these women too. And the tides changed and society made a new law, right? We see the same yeah, thing with... Compared, what? Do you think Cal is going to like all of a sudden pro start protesting? And no, that we, are, matter? we are protesting on their behalf. Because just like a mentally disabled human, right? Mentally disabled humans can't protest on their own behalf because they don't really know what's going on. All they know is that they're suffering if we're exploiting and hurting them and killing them, right? So we stand up on well, their they, behalf. Cows are not... Okay, so if you kill a cow, another cow is not going to be like, oh no, my friend just died. I better stand up and start a protest. What are you talking they're, they're gonna, about? No, listen, listen. Try to track what we're saying, okay? If two mentally disabled adults... If one sees the other one get slaughtered, they might freak out a little bit, just like cows do freak out inside slaughterhouses when they see each other getting killed, okay? But not to the degree that we would, all right? But, uh, but if two mentally disabled people, one sees the other one get killed, yeah, that mentally disabled person who's still alive is not going to grab a megaphone and start protesting because they don't have the mental capability to do that. But we, right, as good people, would protest on their behalf. And say, hey, it's not okay to kill mentally disabled people even though they don't have a full comprehension of what's going on and they can't stand up for themselves. Right? Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. So, wait. You're going to stand up for a cow because you think it's wrong to kill a cow to benef benefit other people. Goddamn right. Yeah, yeah. For the same reason I would do the same thing for a dog or for you or for a mentally disabled person or a child. If I know that somebody's abusing an animal and cutting their heads off is abuse, right? Uh, even if it's done quickly, uh, even if it's just, hold up, even if it's done quickly and painlessly, that is animal cruelty. It's cruel to kill them, okay, to cut their lives short. Uh, so yeah, I stand up for animals. I stand up for humans also. I'm a human rights activist. And wherever I see injustice, I get in the way. So, like, people are going to war to Iraq and they're dying early. You're not going to protest against that. I'm an uh, uh, well, no, an I, being killed early. sorry, I'm an anti-war activist also. So I'm not sure what you're saying. Oh, my bad. I. I I already knew that. My bad. Yeah, my dad. My dad's in the military, and I'm against it. So. Well, I. Your dad's in the military. Okay. Was he's retired? But yeah. So like yeah, we can fight for multiple causes. But yeah, if you're hurting an animal and getting in your way, and we are gonna make this illegal. Like that's that's what you're gonna have to grapple with. Is that more people? Well, I, more, I, more people are joining us because most people do care about truth and justice and care about animals and they're not okay with the animal cruelty and they don't want to see what happens inside of a slaughterhouse, right? Because it's very unappetizing. But once they do see it, they're very much against it. I wish people, like, people wouldn't just go protest and stop the farmers from like doing what they're like trying to continue their livelihood and continue doing their jobs. Like, Why? But I mean, you said, you I, said, hold on, Sizable, hold on. You said a second ago, like, that you're against killing baby animals, so I'm doing something you agree with. Which well, is I, I get, so I, you guys are not like peacefully protesting, like no, we are. This like, is a peaceful protest. Like what we do is we so standing, so yeah, standing the, like standing in the way of people's livelihood is peaceful protesting. Yes, standing in the way of them doing the job. Absolutely. So if I stand in front of a police officer, so if I went stand in front of a police officer when he's trying to do his job, try to catch a criminal or something, that that's right. If, you, if that police officer is following an unjust law and, like, brutalizing some innocent person and you get in their way, you have done something correct. Yes, you should stop that cop but, from brutalizing an innocent but, individual. And that's what farmers are doing to animals is brutalizing innocent individuals. But that's, that's, your, own, that's your own opinion. No, so ask the animals. Screaming. The animals are screaming out for help. They're, they're, they're screaming because they're dying. Because they want help. They obviously, that these animals are innocent, right? It'd be hard to push back on, on that, right? Yeah. It would, okay, I would say, I wouldn't... Yeah, and like, they don't... Like, I mean, you just... Like, what is it that makes you think that they deserve this treatment? Right? That, that makes you think it's okay to... to yeah, like, so like, look... You're trying to, you're trying you... to like, trace through the, through the analogy. It's a really good analogy, right? Um, but you think like, that lives matter because they have a brain. Yeah, if you because saw... They think and they, they think and they feel. Yeah, and they enjoy their lives. Subjective experience, yeah. Yeah, and if you, if you saw somebody... Atrex, if you saw somebody kicking a dog, I think that you're a pretty good person in most aspects of your life, and so you would probably intervene on that dog's behalf. Like, the dog's not attacking anybody or anything, it's just some dude is kicking a dog. You would probably 
yell at that guy to try to get him to stop. And if he doesn't listen to you, you would probably get in between him and the dog to try to save the dog. You might call the cops. You'd probably get the law involved to, to physically prevent this guy from hurting this animal. You might try to pick up this animal and run them off to safety, right? You would, you'd be willing to get kicked yourself probably to save this dog. All right, and that's all we're doing. But but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And that's all. Hold on, hold on, real quick. And that's all we're doing, except for all animals, and we're just applying it to also stabbing them in the neck because kicking an animal is not as bad as stabbing them in the neck. Okay, it's more harmful to be stabbed in the neck than to be kicked. All right, you get kicked, you get a bruise, big deal. You're gonna get over it. All right, but if you get killed. Your whole life is taken from you. Even if it was a quick and painless death, getting shot in the back of the head, your whole life has been taken from you. All of your family and friendships, all your relationships destroyed, all of the opportunity you have for future enjoyment taken away from you for no good reason. It's life. basic stuff. They want to live. They have a future waiting to be enjoyed. Unless they're in a factory farm where we torture the shit out of them all the time, right? But then like... What do you, we to what do you think we torture them? The, the industry tortures them for fun? No, they torture them for profit. Because it's more profitable to keep them all crammed into tiny cages and to like cut their tails off and to cut to their, their testicles off without anesthesia, right? And to clip their ears and to brand them and to steal their babies away from them. Well, people, first of all, like people brand their cattle so if they like get out, then they can find their cattle and not be robbed. Like, so there's like there's people that steal cows. Yeah, so By branding your cow that means it stays in your prep. Like you know it's your cow and it stays in your property. Yeah. You know, how, how about I brand you? That's going to stay safe. Yeah, how about I brand you? Well, would that feel good? Why would you, why would you, would you Well, cuz I don't want anybody to steal you. What if I turn you into my property and I say, "Well, hey, you know, I don't want you getting out." Well, see, I I'm smarter than a cow, so I know that hey, that guy wants to try to kidnap me. I'm going to run away. Okay, so but what if, if cows are like, oh, okay. this guy's trying to feed me. I'm yeah. just going to hop in the trailer." And, All right. So what if you were mentally disabled? And you didn't realize what I was doing to you. Would it be okay for me to do this stuff to you then? Brand you? Well, uh, put you in a cage? But the cows are cows are not mentally disabled. They're they they're not like humans. They don't like people don't think to like a disabled person. They think to them as an equal human being. They don't think that cow right there is the same has the same value as me. Yeah, no, I understand it's that people. I, hold on. I, yeah, it's yeah, arbitrary. it's an arbitrary difference. I understand that people are speciesist and that they value disabled humans, and that they don't value animals, but I'm asking for the actual difference between a mentally disabled person who's only as smart as a pig and an actual pig. What's the difference that justifies protecting one with legal rights and stabbing the other for an unnecessary product like bacon that causes, that increases your risk of cancer, by the way? One is a human being which automatically in my book counts more valuable than Why? anything else. Unless it's my own, unless it's because it's a human being. That's because not I, an they, answer. You're saying it's a human being because it's a human being. Why? What is yeah. true of humans that is not true of animals or that, you know, that justifies this difference in treatment? You can't just say, well, they're part of my group and I like my group because that's – I can say the same thing to justify racism or sexism. Well, we, we, that's, well, it, it, they're, 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 they're not a homo sapien there. Now, I'm not defining by race. They're a homo sapien. That's that's your species. Wait, so you're you just talking about you just want like DNA? Yeah, no, it's by just like by looks, talk, like not my looks, because that makes me sound like a racist. Yeah, it does. But don't just. But, but, yeah, it, like that's the point, though, man. Is that these these like the arbitrary this arbitrary othering of this group is just going to be just as arbitrary as a racist would do, what a sexist would do. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not, they're, not they're, they're not a group. They're an animal. Oh, hold on. Okay, wait up, sure. wait up, wait up. You know that we're animals we're too? Animals well, yeah, right, we, we yeah, are exactly, mammals. Exactly. We are part of the group <laughs> of the animal kingdom. We are part of the uh, primate group, you know? Well, ants are, ants are animals. They're part of the insect group, so we also have to value their life. So you can't yes. kill an ant. Yes, so whenever an ant comes into my room... You just, you just come... Yeah, so whenever an ant comes into my room, I catch and release, right? I non-violently get them out of my house, back into the yard. But... Unfortunately, how's it supposed to find its colony afterwards? Could they use yeah, pheromones you to know, find a colony? They okay. use the trail of pheromones to yeah. find a colony. So you just you just made that ant homeless. It's, okay. it's gonna die. All right. So we do you the best. The okay. Listen. So we do the best we can. We can't be perfect in this world, but you have the right to not have your home infested by insects. Okay, and like bed bugs attacking you and making it so you can't sleep. 
right? You have the right to defend yourself. Ideally, you would use nonviolent means to protect yourself from these animals. But unfortunately, we cannot live perfect lives. I crush insects just walking across the road, okay? So that's just an unfortunate thing of life. I wish it didn't have to be like that. I wish I could live in such a way where I cause zero harm and death to all humans and animals, but that's just not realistic. But I do the best I can. I catch and release when I can. But just because I, hold on, just because I kill insects, unfortunately on accident crossing the road, does not give me a justification to pay someone to stab a pig when I don't need to eat bacon. What? Wait, so if someone hit a deer, would you rather just that deer just, like, if someone hit a deer with a car on accident, like, just out of the blue, like, you know, people just accidentally hit, like, deers try to cross the road, and boom, car hits them, and they're, they're dead. Would you rather a deer just go to waste and, like, step on the side of the road and just rot, or would you rather have someone, like, harvest the deer, or, like... No. So, what I would prefer, what I think would be best for everybody, is if we do not treat animals like a food source when they're not, and instead just put that deer off to the side of the road so that wild animals could eat them. But then, but, but what happens if a coyote wants to eat a cow? You have to protect the cow because their lives matter. We shouldn't be breeding cows. But then the coyotes... We shouldn't be breeding cows in the first place. Then we wouldn't have to worry about saving them from predation. But yeah, like, but going back to your deer thing, like if the animal died of natural causes or whatever, or an accident, there's nothing in my mind, there's nothing unethical about eating their meat, about eating their dead body. I have no desire to do that. And it's got cholesterol in it, which increases your risk of heart disease and, and cancer and stuff. So like, if you care about human health, I wouldn't recommend eating animal products, but I'm concerned with the needless enslavement, torture, and murder of innocent animals. Okay. I hope I talk to you guys again. All right, talk to us again. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for the conversation. Uh, I completely agree, which might be weird to hear because if you've checked my thing, I have the uh, not vegan rule. Okay. Yeah, you just said you agree with that position, and you're a uh, you're a non vegan, right? Yeah. If it would be effective for any of us to essentially go vegan, because I I completely agree with everything. Like, I just don't know how effective it would be in stopping the what is essentially just a global, uh, I don't know, plague, essentially. That's a good question. So uh, one thing to think about is like even if we can't stop all the suffering in all parts of the world, doesn't mean we shouldn't do our own part to make our corner of the world better, right? So, But also I would say don't underestimate yourself and don't, under, don't underestimate the power of a collective group of people who care about making the world a better place because societies do change. Uh, there are many activists in those other parts of the world uh, who are already doing the work we're doing here to make their country vegan as soon as possible, if that's possible. Um, but yeah, so like, as far as going vegan, going vegan, yes, that does help immensely because uh, we have one thing about like supply and demand, right? So these, product, these um, companies make money because of a consumer base that's buying these products. If people grow together in a mass economic boycott, then those companies are not going to make as much money and they'll be incentivized to sell vegan products instead. Um, and then also though, yeah, the animals need us to not just stop eating them, they need us to stand up for their rights. So I would encourage everybody to go vegan, but also talk to your friends and family about what's happening to animals. Show them videos of slaughterhouses, Share with them the information about the health effects and the environmental effects and speciesism and do your part just like if you were the victim in a slaughterhouse with your friends being killed in front of you. Advocate for animals the way you would want to be advocated for if it was happening to you. And join the fight for human rights as well. That's super important too. Uh, but yeah, so like the, the more active we get, um, you know, the, the, the better our chances are at changing the system. So we need individual consumer change, but we also need systemic change where we change these institutions and work together to pass new laws, to shut down slaughterhouses and farms and create an animal bill of rights and things like this. But we can't really do that systemic change until we have enough individuals who are on board, which is why we're doing this individual one-on-one -on -one, like educational outreach. Does that make sense? Completely. But there's other forms of activism. There are other forms of activism such as giant protests or taking, you know, going, like I've gone with like a thousand activists gone inside of factory farms and slaughterhouses and like 
chain ourselves up to the kill floor so that they can't kill any animals that day and it shuts down their business and we rescue some of the animals and take them to a sanctuary and a bunch of activists get arrested uh, voluntarily. They knew this was going to happen and they chose to get arrested and go to jail, get out the next day, go to court, fight it out in court. Oftentimes the charges get dropped because the, the company doesn't want to press charges against us because it just leads to more uh, media attention that exposes the cruelty they were engaging in because we filmed the whole thing and it shows all this animal cruelty inside of the farm or slaughterhouse, right? And these giant protests get international media coverage. So this is there's a lot of different ways to go about this stuff. Lobbying politicians, introducing bills uh, to the legislation, um, just talking to people, doing cooking shows, you know, all kinds of stuff we can do. I don't think you necessarily have to be vegan to be an ethical consumer, right? Because like the biggest qualm I have with this community is like the polarization and especially like the alienation of people who can't fit this like very specific standard of morality. So um, like background knowledge, I guess I was vegan for a year and then I started consuming uh, backyard eggs. I have pet chickens and basically my point is that um, morality isn't like black and white and there are gray areas in which I believe you can still consume animal products and be ethical. Okay, so I'm going to post a video in stage one text um, by Earthling Ed that's called Why Vegans Don't Eat Backyard Eggs. There's two things. One is that when we eat eggs, even if it's like in the ideal situation, like maybe what you're describing, that promotes the idea that eggs are a food source for humans. And so when other people see you buying that, or sorry, eating that, uh, then they're going to think that's just going to reinforce this idea that it's okay to eat eggs. And so then they're going to likely go buy eggs from a grocery store, which got their eggs from a factory farm, right? Also, the other thing is that eggs have a mad amount of cholesterol in them, which are really bad for your body. So if you want to promote human health, we should not be eating any animal products. But also, uh, the way that people usually get backyard hens for backyard eggs is they buy the chicks as babies from a hatchery. And this hatchery, and I don't know about the farm that you got your birds from, but what happens is they kill all the baby males on their first day of life because the baby boys, yeah, yeah because the baby boys do not produce eggs. And the baby boys, uh, because this kind of breed that they are of bird, they will never grow big enough to become a meat bird. It won't be profitable, so they just kill them on their first day of life. And if we go buy a, if we purchase a, you know, a female chick from a hatchery, we're giving money to that hatchery and supporting that business that kills all the males and then mistreats all the females that grow up and stuff like this. So that's problematic also. And then, and then the other thing is that we've been breeding these animals into existence, selectively breeding and genetically modifying them to, like we said earlier, to produce more eggs than they naturally would. And this does hurt their bodies. And even if you feed the shells back to them, it's not good for them to be laying an egg a day. And uh, they often will have higher rates of ovarian cancer and things like this. And so we need to just stop breeding these animals. And if you want to have animals on your land, rescue them, right? But don't support the the industry in the process. Okay, uh, I'll respond to that. So um, you said, uh, oh, you said by meat eating eggs, I'd be... Uh, showing other people that eggs are a food source. Okay, I would say I'm not responsible for other people's actions. Like, if, if I drink alcohol, right, I'm not responsible for someone who misuses, like, alcohol or they're, like, an, an addict. That's not my problem. Um, then he said cholesterol. I, I don't care about the health issue, honestly. I'm, I don't think we should make fast food illegal because it's unhealthy. Like, I, I just... I, I'm not here for the, uh, the health argument. And uh, what else did you say? Producing an egg a day. Uh, you said something about the hatcheries. The hatcheries. I, don't, I don't remember. I'm sorry. It was a lot of point points. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so the hatcheries and grinding up the babies on their first day because they're males. Yeah, um, but that's not the case. I don't see the relevance. So the, the farm that you got these birds from, how do they treat their birds? Well, I mean, it's a small family farm. There's, they're not ground up. It's not a factory farm. Is it an egg farm or a meat farm? Uh, it's a, They have cattle, but uh, they have like a small backyard egg thing as well. The, the, the thing is, they're, they're going to have acquired their birds from, from a breeder, right? 
it's saying that like oh every every piece of clothing you have is directly linked to slavery yeah, right i don't think Which sweatshop is, workers but... are i don't think sweatshop workers are being ground up alive are they i'm pretty sure they're not right but yeah i understand that yeah but also like we have to buy clothing we don't have to buy animal products I still don't see the issue with this specific situation. Do you think it's okay to, like, breed the animals that you have? Like, because, like I was saying, if they're going through pain simply by existing, and if we could instead use that land for animals who already exist, who we rescue from farms and slaughterhouses, do you at least agree that we shouldn't be breeding these animals into existence for the purpose of eating their eggs? Well, the ones we have, we don't, we don't breed them. We don't put them in, uh, like, incubators and stuff when they lay eggs. It's natural. Like, they have the urge... Sometimes the hens feel broody and they'll naturally lay on the eggs. Like there's nothing we can do to stop, to stop that. But yeah. um. But in general, yeah, I think breeding is unnecessary from an environmental perspective, at least. Yeah. Yeah, from an environmental perspective, and also because these animals, their bodies, are not always like enjoying their life because of the way they've been bred to produce more eggs than they naturally would. Well, I would disagree. Would. Uh, there are different uh, species of hens, obviously, and the ones we have are very different from the ones you see in factory farms. So, okay. So, how often do the, the hens that you have uh, lay? Pardon? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the hens you own. How often do they lay? Like, how, well, I said it depends on it depends on the uh, species, right? So, some of them lay like two eggs a week. Some of them lay like three. Some of them lay one every day. It depends. And you realize without the selective breeding, it'd be like once a month, right? And it, it puts like this. Yeah, I understand that. Right? Yeah. And that and that you can actually like, you know, there is a solution to this, right? You could just give them one of these hormonal implants that'll stop them from ovulating. You know, I mean, I would be down to do that. I have no issue giving up the eggs. Them. It's just some, like another expense. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah, fair I mean, argument. Look, yeah. Well, look, if, it's, if it's not within your means to do so, that's probably understandable. I think it's like is going to be quite expensive. There's going to be a lot of uh, hens, right? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, so I would just recommend, like, if you want to learn more about what we're talking about and some additional points, Earthling Ed on YouTube has a great video called Why Yeah, Ve I watched it. <laughs> okay, yeah, but for everybody else, Why Vegans yeah, Don't Eat it. Backyard Eggs. Um, but, yeah, so talk to us again. We appreciate the respectful dialogue. And, um, again, it sounds like, you know, at least you're not supporting factory farms and slaughterhouses and stuff like that, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, have a good day, guys. All right, see ya. The cows being raised on, like, Gobi beef farms, uh, uh, to be immoral, considering that they are living a fairly good life because they're getting a great amount of food every day. They're being massaged every day. Um, yeah. Yeah, so how old are they when they're killed? Boom but at the same time Wait, I, don't, I think it's unfair to sorry, as, sorry see if you, you broke up there a bit can you just how old are they when they killed um I assume they're killed right after they're I assume they're killed right after they um get away from adolescence and just when they become adults but at the same time I think it's unfair to ask uh farmers to kill these cows when they're an old age considering uh, when like cows get old and shit, they did, like it's not like they just fall from like die and like. I had a dog. He was a pit bull named Enigma, and Enigma was really cool. And he lived to be about fourteen years old. And once he got so old and decrepit that his life was not worth living because he couldn't walk, he was vomiting all the time, he couldn't control his bowels, he was in a lot of pain. And so I put him to sleep. Uh, and that was like a mercy killing. That's euthanasia. That's doing him a favor. I would want someone to do the same for me if I was in that position. Um, but that's not what's happening to these animals. They are not killed uh, when they're in an old age for their own good. They're killed when they're children or, you know, they're, they're killed when they're children. All right. So, like, I don't know what farm you're talking about. It sounded like you didn't have an exact age of when you know that they're killed. But they're killed as soon as they reach slaughter weight, which is as soon as they've been fed enough to where they're not going to get any bigger. And that's when they are children. Okay, uh, So I think that's animal cruelty. If I had killed my dog when he was six months old or a year old and ate him, that would be animal cruelty uh, because it's mean to take away his life. It's mean to cut short his existence, to deprive him of 
a decade or whatever of life that he enjoyed? Um, uh, um. Yeah, because the oppressor is not the victim. All right, whoever's abusing the animal, they should not be in that industry to begin with. I understand that some people are like raised in that. You know, the parents were farmers, so they became a farmer and all this. But like, we have a responsibility to do better than what our parents taught us to do. Okay, so I was raised to think it's okay to kill animals, but I stopped. And so uh, we have a social responsibility to the victims to stop hurting them. All right. So we need to like there are vegan groups that help farmers transition from animal farming to plant farming. Uh, so there's Rowdy Girl Sanctuary has the Ranchers Advocacy Program um, where she was a cattle rancher and she went vegan and she and her husband uh, con transformed their animal farm into a sanctuary. And now they help other farmers transition into like growing mushrooms or whatever they want to do that doesn't involve animal abuse. Um, but e And there's also the Vegan Society has a similar program. But even if we didn't have those programs, it's not on vegans to make this easier for farmers to stop hurting animals. Farmers need to take the initiative and change their, change their job. And if that means taking some financial losses, so be it. Like, I'm sorry, but like your business is unethical and incredibly violent and does not deserve to continue existing. It should have never existed in the first place. And so, uh, it, you know, I've, I've lived in my car for years in order to be an animal rights activist, um, just to help animals. So I wasn't even like hurting animals when I took that financial loss to like become a full-time activist. So the least they can do is drop the knife. Does that make sense? Yeah, I completely get that. They do scream out. They have their own voice. They scream out in pain and fear, begging for mercy, and the farmer ignores it and cuts their head off. Good. Uh, and we need to like be mindful that we're using effective tactics and not needlessly offending people or using slurs or things like that. But there is something to be said about the efficacy of disruptive, confrontational, controversial activism that gets people talking, that highlights the severity of the situation, draws attention to the issue, and uh, empowers people to take collective action. And if we look at other social justice movements like the women's right to vote movement, the civil rights movement, the gay rights movement, etc., these activists used protests, controversial protests, to further their goal, to upset the status quo, to say we're not going to accept this socialized, this normalized violence against innocent individuals, whether they're humans or animals, and we're just not going to tolerate it anymore. And if that pisses off some people in the process, then so be it. Uh, because, you, you know, you should not be comfortable being speciesist. It, animal cruelty is no laughing matter, and we're not going to tolerate it anymore. Now, we can be polite in our one-on-one -on -one educational outreach like what we're doing right now, but at the end of the day, we are going to make this illegal. And anybody who does not join us will be, you know, left in the dust of history. If you're poor, it's, not, it's very difficult to stick to a vegan diet. There's a website called Plant Based on a Budget, and so they have all kinds of recipes and food guides uh, for, you know, eating when you don't have a lot of money. But if you think about it, all the cheapest foods in the grocery store are vegan. So rice, pasta, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, beans, bread, super cheap, all the nutrients you need, uh, healthy, affordable, delicious, put some sauce on there, some seasoning, and you're good to go. But yeah, you're right that like some uh, products like vegan burgers, uh, vegan milk and stuff, they're going to be a little bit more expensive right now because they're new to the market. There's not a lot of vegans yet buying these products. So uh, in these early stages of the movement, unfortunately, some of us are going to have to bite the bullet if we want those products, but we don't have to have those products. You can still be vegan on a whole foods plant-based diet, but if you want those vegan pizzas and stuff, yeah, it's going to cost a little bit more, but the more people who start buying those products, the cheaper those products will become because they get more popular and profitable, and so, uh, so that price will go down soon. But also, uh, at the Taco Bell, you've got the dollar menu. There's a uh, Bean, bean and rice burritos for the same price as a beef burrito, you know, so uh, it's really not that difficult to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been vegan for 11 years and my yearly income for that whole time has been below the poverty level. So uh, less than $12,000 per year and I'm able to do it. Um, so, yeah, I just don't want people to think that 
you can't do it. I would say it's good for vegans to buy vegan products from non-vegan businesses because even though we're supporting an unethical business, we're showing them that there's a demand for vegan products, which increases the likelihood that they're going to replace those vegan products with more vegan products and add more vegan products to their menu which makes veganism more accessible for other people who want to transition but find it difficult. Um, and, and, but yeah, or if you can find a, you know, it's also really hard to find an entirely vegan restaurant or an entirely vegan grocery store. So we work with the non-vegan world that we live in and we do the best we can. And you can be like a really ethical person in all other aspects of your life, like treating humans with respect, treating dogs and cats with respect. But if you're, paying people to stab cows, pigs, chickens, and fish, then you, I would say you're being highly unethical in that area of your life, in your treatment of those animals. I get it. Okay, well, first I'll just say, like, if somebody actually cannot be vegan because they're, like, homeless, though I know a lot of homeless vegans. I was one of them myself. I had the luxury of living in my car, but I've known vegans who actually lived on the sidewalk. But... Um, some, right. some, but, but if you're in a real situation where it's like way too hard to be vegan or you simply cannot be vegan, we're not trying to judge you for that then, you know, like you're in a really hard spot and we understand we live in a non-vegan world, which right. makes it, which can make it more difficult to be vegan. But generally speaking, most of us can be vegan, uh, very easily. And so we should be vegan. Um, but yeah, so, uh, there's stuff like rice, pasta, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, beans, bread. Uh, and then you got the dollar menu at Taco Bell. You get rice and bean burrito. Um, there's fries at uh, Burger King or whatever, you know. Um, you can get, like, apple slices at, at McDonald's um, or a salad, you know, right, stuff like that. True. So there's there's options, but it's on us, you know, the people who more easily can go vegan to go vegan so that it changes our society to make it easier for people to go vegan because there's a lot of people who want to go vegan but they feel like they can't you know and I want to like empower them to like hopefully realize that maybe they actually can go vegan and give them the tools to do that but if they legit cannot go vegan because they can't afford like if they're homeless or something we need to change our society so that those people who want to go vegan can go vegan no yeah I, I totally hear you dude I, I definitely do want to go vegan it's just I don't know where to start do you know like any good habits I can good like get into? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So in in this server in the menu, we have a section called mm -hmm. "Help Me Go Vegan," and that'll give you like a bunch of recipes and nutrition guides and other vegans that you can talk to who will give you links to different websites that have recipes or like PETA has a section in their website about like. Uh, vegan products at Taco Bell, Burger King, McDonald's, whatever, you know, so those kinds of resources will help you out. Um, just stay in the server and keep asking questions and we'll point you in the right direction. Believe in yourself, you know, don't underestimate yourself because you are strong, you are smart and you can do it and the animals need your help and they need it now. And, uh, and you know, the first few weeks might be a little rough of transitioning, but it's nothing you can't handle. Uh, I remember I had some cravings, you know, but I just persevered and like, uh, psychologists say that it takes 21 days to change a habit. So whether it's like stopping smoking cigarettes or stopping drinking alcohol or a new diet, a new exercise routine, whatever it is, it takes like 21 days to break a habit and create a new one. And then once you get over that hill, then it's like super easy. So like I've been vegan now for 11 yeah. years and I never think about eating meat or dairy or eggs. It's disgusting. I just think about slaughterhouses when I see all those products, you know. So uh, so just get through that hill and you'll be fine. Um, all right. Uh, I'm, I generally do not know this question, but for educational purposes, uh, are sodas vegan? Yeah, sodas vegan. Okay. Um, oh, so you can just have any type of soda? Yeah, and there's vegan candy also. I'll post uh, some some vegan candy in stage one text. Is so, Hershey's like vegan? Uh, well? No, like you got to be careful about milk chocolate because it's got milk in it. Mm -hmm. But also like Hershey. Oh, of course. Oh, my God. Yeah, but there's there's yeah. like dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is vegan. So long as it doesn't have milk or eggs in it, you're good. Oh, I um, love yeah, but, like, be careful of, like, Hershey's and, like, big-name brands like that often use child slavery 
uh, for their like slave labor in other countries to produce their cocoa. So like, uh, go to a website called the Food Empowerment Project. It's a vegan site, and they have a list of fair right. trade chocolate. Uh, wait, let me that. Yeah, Food, Food Empowerment Project. Oh, I have the website. Thank you so much. Like you I feel like this Discord server will really put me on the right track because I've seen a couple of videos that really, really, like you know, it really did change my mind and my perspective on how I see most things. It's just I, I need to like get a good habit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I really do think I. Can become yeah, you can do it for sure, and it's it's easier when you've got friends doing it by your side, you know, so see if you can get one of your friends to take the 21 day vegan challenge with you. Uh, and, and just do a search on, uh, you know, you can do like meetups.com and maybe you'll find some vegan groups in your area. Uh, or if nothing else, you know, just, uh, befriend, befriend vegans on this server or on Facebook and stuff like that. There's a bunch of vegan groups on Facebook. So at least you have friends on the internet, you know, um, but try to make friends yeah. in real life too. Alright, then I think that's it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a good day. Thanks for your call.